Hello, and welcome to my next executive series video. Our topic, design changes. Aaron Snyder here from Quality Systems Explained, where we make quality systems simple for you. If you're new to my channel, please hit the subscribe button. If this is the first executive series video that you've seen, please go back and watch the introduction. You can check out the video description below to links to any supporting information and an outline of the material that we will cover. In my executive series, we have a standard agenda, which consists of four items. You can see those four items in the progress bar below. Make sure you stick around to the end of the video to get those three bonus questions. Our topic today, design changes, comes directly from 820.30i in ISO 1345, section 7.3.9. Design change in five words. Control change ensure safe devices. You must have a procedure that defines how you manage change during the development process. When you look at design changes, the most important thing that you have to understand is the impact of that change. You have to analyze your planning steps, your inputs, outputs, verification, validation, transfer, design reviews, all of that. Then you have to document why you are making the change and you also have to explain why the change doesn't affect the safety and effectiveness of your medical device. All changes have to be documented, reviewed, and approved. So how do I know this is working? Well first, the impact of your change is analyzed by a cross-functional team, maybe a change control board, and a plan is developed on what work is needed in order to implement that change. Second, the risk of your change is fully understood and documented within your change management records. And then finally, the change is documented, it's reviewed, and it's approved before implementation. And all the work that is needed in order to show that the change is appropriate and then actually implement the change, all of that work is documented as well. So how do I know it's not working? Well first, changes are made without change control. Okay, Changes aren't documented, they're not reviewed and approved. Second, the impact assessment or the risk assessment related to the change is not complete. It's not fully understood and there are gaps in that documentation. Then finally, you have major failures later on in the process, either later on in the design process or when the product is actually put out in the market related to changes that were made that were not assessed appropriately. Now for those three bonus questions. What change control process governs the changes that we make in design and development? Second, do we have a different process for change control pre-design transfer than we do post-design transfer? And then finally, when we assess the impact of a change, do significant or major changes require a design review to be done after the change is implemented? If not, why? Thank you for watching. If you found this video helpful, please like, subscribe, share, and comment. If you have any questions, please send me an email at QMS dot jedi at gmail.com. This is Aaron Snyder from Quality Systems Explained. Never stop learning.